Adventures. It is a gorgeous day in southern Maine today. The sun has come out after two days of cold rain. And uh, I have no idea what day I am in sheltering in place. Uh, but fortunately, we're still able to get outside and go on grand adventures to the grocery store. This afternoon on the Boomer Tech Adventures Facebook Live, we're going to be exploring the basics of the Apple Photos app specifically for Macs. So, if you have a Mac laptop or desktop, I suggest you grab it or go sit by your desktop so you can follow along and try things out as we demonstrate them. Now, we have been talking about the Photos app for the past week, and here's uh, the schedule we've been following. Last Tuesday, talked about editing tools part one, where we covered autocorrect, cropping, and filters. Just this past Thursday, we did a part two on the editing tools, where we looked at how we can adjust uh, exposure, color, and lots of other things in the Photos app. Plus, we took a look at markup. If you want to see those videos, uh, the Facebook Lives are always recorded, and you just need to scroll down on this page, or you can go to the Boomer Tech Adventures YouTube channel, and they are also posted there. If you go to the YouTube uh, channel, please subscribe. That way you won't miss any of our videos. Today, as I said, we're going to look at the basics of the Photos app. And then on Tuesday, we'll look at the Photos app basics again, but this time specifically for the iPhone and the iPad. It's just enough different to, from the Mac that we really needed two different sessions. So our topics today are organization and navigation of the Photos app on a Mac, uh, how we add information to our images and how we can search images, and also the types of albums. Now, as I said, this is just basic information. These are topics are based on a lot of questions that come up in my adult ed classes. And I find that people are not always comfortable with this particular app. So these three topics will help all of us uh, come up with that feeling of uh, confidence and competence with the app so we can go on and uh, explore other things. So for example, we're not going to get into projects like how you create a book or how you make a slideshow. Once you understand these three topics, you will be able to take on other aspects of, or other functions I should say, of the Photos app. If you open your laptop or your desktop to the Photos app, you will see something like this. Down the left hand side there will be a menu, which we will look in detail, and on the right that you will either see thumbnails of images you have taken or you might see one picture. It all depends what you were doing the last time you were in the Photos app. So let's start with the organization and navigation of this particular app. All of our images are in chronological order. They are organized by years, and they're labeled years. <laughs> they're also grouped by month and location, and that's called collections. And they're also grouped by days, and that's called moments. If you look at your screen, you will notice that there are four tops, uh, four tabs, excuse me, at the top. Photos, moments, collections, and years. Now, if you are running an older version of software, instead of seeing these tabs, uh, you may also, or I should say, in addition to seeing these tabs, you may also see some arrows over at the left above the menu. 
In older versions, you use those arrows to navigate among the different uh, sections. However, with the newest software, you just use the tabs and you would click on photos or moments or collections or years. And you can see right now, I'm clicked on photos, which means this is all the pictures, I've access to all the pictures I've ever taken that are in this photo app. Now, when we get specific to navigation, as I said, we're gonna click on the tabs in the top center of the screen photos, moments, collections, and years. Now let me show you what that looks like. Photos, as I said, this is all your images. They're still in chronological order. Uh, this particular screenshot is, uh, includes my pictures from a year ago, March and April in 2019. And you can see right below that, uh, my photos library, it says I have over 14,000 items. Uh, if you're getting short on memory, one of the things you might do is go through and sort through your pictures, because most of us take an up, up an awful lot of space with our photos. I know I have a lot of duplicates or things I've created for presentations that I really don't need to still be there, I should go through and sort them out. Just like we do with our photos, black and white photos, color photos, slides that we took 20, 30, 40, 50 years ago. I know with my family photos, I finally went through them and there are all these pictures of people that I didn't know that were friends of my, fam of my parents, uh, so I got rid of them. I kept the family pictures, of course, but these people I didn't recognize, you know, they were gone. Should probably also do this regularly with your photos on, in your photos app and all your devices. Now moments. These are grouping the pictures by specific day. So you can see as you look at uh, July 2nd, that's a very specific day. Those are pictures I took, can't quite see them, but down below, where it says South Glastonbury, Montana, those were the four pictures I took on July 3rd, 2019. Those are actually a view from the Airbnb we stayed at, which was gorgeous, and there was thunderstorm, and you can see the rainbow that came out afterwards. So Moments is grouping the pictures by specific day and will usually give the location also. Your collections, as I said, are grouped by months. So looking at the top arrow, these are pictures that I took and put into my Photos app between May and July 2019. And again, you can see that most of them were taken in the Lisbon Falls, Bath, Brunswick area. As opposed to June 25th to July 4th, you can see that they are labeled, they were taken in uh, Yellowstone National Park. And then finally, you can also, when you're doing a search, you can go by years. Now these thumbnails are very small and it's very difficult to uh, pick out the individual picture you might want. But you know that if you just click on any of the pictures, it'll get bigger and you'll be able to find the one that you're looking for if you're searching by years. That's how you can navigate by the tabs up at the top. Let's look at this menu on the left in more detail. You will notice at the very top it's called the library. And so as you peruse that menu, you see it starts with photos which if you click there, that's where you can get at your moments, your collections, and your years. Then there's some subtopics, which we'll look at in detail, memories, favorites, etc. Uh, there are some things that are shared. And then the last big category is albums. So under that, just go back one, under those images under photos, you see the first one is memories. Well, memories is 
done automatically. These are images from a time, a place, or a similar topic. They're grouped together and it's done by the software that runs the Photos app. And so it picks things that it thinks the software, the commands, think go together. So I just took a quick, quick screenshot of a couple of my memories. One is my fluffy friends in 2018. And if you look over to the right, you see a smaller image that shows a couple of my fluffy friends. Uh, then under that, under the fluffy friends, it says your majesty photos from 2013 and 2019. That's because, it's labeled that because I taught my phone to, or my old phone, to call me Your Majesty, which was kind of fun. And of course, these devices all talk to one another. So that's what memories are. Uh, you can go in and edit it to some degree. You can make slideshows. And again, it's just a feature where um, the software is picking what seems to go together. Sometimes it's a little strange, but they're fun to look at. Favorites. These are the pictures you've labeled as your favorites. You might say, well, how do I do that? Well, if you look over towards the right, there's an arrow and it's pointing up to a heart. When you are looking at your individual photos, you have the option to label them a favorite and you just click on that heart and then they will show up in this grouping. The other uh, one, one of the ones listed under photos is people. We have the ability, which I'm going to show you in a few minutes, how to label people in photographs, how to tag them. And once you do that, you can search for them by people, person's name. They will also be grouped by people you have labeled together. I think this is kind of cool, places the software automatically tracks, because if you have location services on in settings, if you have location set, uh, services on in settings for your camera, it will, the software will keep track of where you're taking the pictures and tell you basically how many. So if you look at, and it is worldwide, right now you're just seeing North America. But if this were, uh, if I was live on my Photos app, I could move this and you could see Europe, Asia, Africa, etc. But you can see that I've got over 3,000 pictures that are taken in the northern New England area, because that's where I live. But you can see I've also got pictures from other parts of the country. So that's kind of fun to look at. Now, next under there are imports. These are pictures you have brought into the Photos app. They may come from a camera, they may come from your phone, they may come from a tablet, they may be screenshots you are taking. Well, why do you want to bother to import additional photos into your Photos app? Well, for two main reasons. Number one, you can put them in the albums that you create. And number two, you have the ability to edit them. So if they are not a uh, spectacular image, you have the ability to go in and crop and adjust color and exposure, etc. Well, how do you import? Well, it's pretty simple. You go to, you have your photos app open. You go to file on the menu at the top and you look down and you see it says import. So you would cl click on import. Once you do that, you have the option to navigate where you want to get that picture from. So I've got two examples up on the screen. The first one on the left is downloads. If I download something, it does not automatically go into my photos app if it's an image. So I have to import it. So if I were going to my downloads and I wanted to import one of those pictures, I would click on it, highlight it, and then you see where the red arrow and the green button says review for import, and I would click on that. But I might 
have a picture on my desktop. Might be a screenshot. So once again, I would navigate to my desktop. I would highlight the photo or the image that I wanted to import. And again, click on the green button for, that says review for import. So that's how you import a picture. And again, uh, something to think about with importing pictures to photos is that because it allows you to put something uh, in an album, but it also allows you to edit to make the image more stunning. Now, leaving the, that menu just for a minute, I want to show you the actions you can take when you have a picture up. So if you look at the picture, it's behind that uh, little menu box. Uh, it's a picture of a daylily. If I click on that circle with an I, the I stands for information, I have the option to add all sorts of additional information that will identify and clarify this picture. Now, this is what it looks like bigger. So you can see I can add a title. It's already got the date and time when I took it. it tells me uh, with what device I took it on and which lens. I can add a description. So for example, if I remembered what particular day Lily this was, uh, I could write that in. I could add a keyword. And then what most people like where it says add faces. If this was a person, if it was my sister Lynn, I could add the name. And then it that particular image is tagged and it uh, becomes searchable. At the bottom of the information dialog box you see there's a little map and it shows precisely where I took that picture. So you have the ability on the Mac to add all sorts of details and this is one of the big differences between the Mac Photos app and the iPad, iPhone. In order to add this kind of information on an iPad and um, iPhone, you either have to use markup, which puts things right on the image, or you have to get a third per party app. So what is another action? Well, this time the arrow is pointing to the share box. Anytime you see that square with the arrow pointing up, you know it gives you the ability to share. What does it look like? Well, I could share this photo to a shared album. I could airdrop it. I could put it in my notes. I could text it through messages. I could set it as a desktop picture. And there are a few other choices if I click on more. So again, when you see that little box, it means that it gives you some, some options for sharing this particular photo. Then the other four I've already talked about either in this video or in one of the previous videos on editing. Uh, the heart again identifies this as a favorite. The next one going to the right, the box with the arrow, that allows you to rotate it. Sometimes a picture will come in an email and it'll be upside down or on its side. If you import it into photos, then you can rotate it so it's right side up. Uh, the magic wand is the enhancement tool which we talked about on uh, last Tuesday. And then the edit button which we talked about on Tuesday and Thursday. And again, those videos are available either down below on this page or you can go to Boomer Tech Adventures YouTube channel. All right, now I think the search feature is really terrific. Sometimes maybe I'm creating a card or I am uh, doing a presentation. I say, oh, I want a picture of a sunset and I don't want to go through all 17,000 images looking for a sunset. So in the box up at the right that usually says search, I simply typed in the word sunsets and automatically the software brought up all of these different images of sunsets. 
Now I hadn't labeled them as sunsets in that information box, but the software is sophisticated enough that it knows what the parameters are, what it should be looking for when it does the search. And it's almost instantaneous. It's really pretty amazing. And so there's all sorts of choices for me if I'm looking for a particular sunset. Now you can also do a people search. So in this case, I was looking for Chris Toy. And as you know, Chris is one of my colleagues in Boomer Tech Adventures. But what some of you may not know is that Chris and I presented together for 10 years on educational topics. And we traveled and we'd go into schools, had a good time. So I have a lot of pictures of Chris doing different activities. So I simply typed in the name Chris Toy and because I had labeled him in one or two pictures on that information block, information dialog box. Uh, it was able to use, the software was able to use the face recognition features and find all the pictures I have that have Chris Toy in it. Now let me tell you an interesting story about this face recognition. One of my participants in adult ed class, we were talking about doing searches and face recognition, and she shared with us that uh, in her photos app, she had a lot of family pictures, and you know, she labeled her aunts and uncles, etc. And then she was scanning in photos, uh, early black and white photos of that she didn't take, but were family photos from when her aunts and uncles and grandparents when they were all much younger. And she had one of her aunt when she was a little girl, say six or seven. And when she scanned it in and then did a search, the face recognition software was so good, it identified this little six or seven year old as her aunt. So uh, it's pretty sophisticated software we have on our devices. Anyway, face recognition, a good way to find a particular picture. All you have to do is make sure you have at least one picture labeled with the person's name so the face recognition software can go into action. Now, let's go back to this menu and talk about albums. You will see under the word albums, it says media types. These are automatic categories. Once again, the software generates them and you can see the types. So there will be a grouping of all the videos that are in your photos app. There'll be selfies and that simply means those which have been taken with the selfie lens on your phone or that obviously look like they're direct on. Uh, live photos, portrait, time-lapse, slow-mo. So if you're looking, for example, I say, oh, I know I did a, a slow-mo of, of them playing soccer. Where can I find that? And you're not even sure which year it is because it was several years ago. You can go right to the slow-mo album and you'll be able to find it. But again, these are automatic categories. However, you can make your own. So now the next label is My Albums, you can see on the, the left. And you will see that I have a bunch. And a lot of them say Demo. That's because I create different demos when I'm teaching adult ed. And I don't, I'm not very good about going and getting rid of them. But your, when you create your own, they will be less listed in this left hand column or this left hand menu. Well, how do you create your own album? Pretty, pretty straightforward. So the first thing you do is you call up a picture or two that you want and then you go to file, which you see highlighted in green and the arrow is pointing to, and it says new album and in this case it says with one selection because I only selected one picture. So I would click on that and the next thing would happen, there would be a small box would pop up where I can name this folder. In this case, I'm calling it COVID-19. That's because this particular image was taken about 6.15 at my local small grocery store 
where it was the first time they opened it just for senior citizens. And the parking lot was so full, it was it had more cars in it than it does when we are expecting a big blizzard here in Maine. It was just amazing. I almost didn't find a place to park. So I thought, okay, I'm going to do a folder called, or an album called COVID-19. So I named it. And so now it exists. Well, what if I want to add additional slides to it? Well, there are, I'm going to show you two ways. The first is I highlight a picture or more, and then I go up in the menu at the top to image. And if I go down, you see I have the option to add to COVID-19. So that is one way I can add a slide to an album. Now, that's the most recent album. That's why it's there. You will notice that all my album choices are not. So what, ha what about that? What do I do about that? Well, probably the easiest thing you can do is simply drag and drop. So I have that little thumbnail highlighted and I would just drag it to COVID-19. But I could have dra dragged it to any of my other albums that are over there in that column. So drag and drop is probably the easiest way to move photos to an album. Now I want you to make sure you understand this. Because a photo is in an album, that does not take it out of your photos. It's in both places. So don't think that you can put a photo in an album and then go delete it up in the big category of photos because if you do it will also delete it from your albums. So as we come to the end I would just like to review some of the big ideas to remember. That number one the images can be arranged and grouped in chronological order. That's done automatically for you. You can number two you can add information about an image. You just have to click on that circle with the eye in it. All your images are searchable. There are different types of albums. Media types, which are automatic, and your own, which you create. So I hope this basic information uh, is helpful. One last thing, however, there is always the help button. So again, at that very top menu, you see it says help. When you're in the Photos app, when you click on that, what you will see is over on the left, Photos User Guide, Table of Contents. You see the Table of Contents over on the left. And uh, you notice that I clicked on Create Albums. And there are the directions step by step for creating an album. I have found the help directions very useful. In fact, I kept forgetting, oh, how do I add a photo after I've already created the album? So I went to the help, I found it, and I'm able to show you. So don't forget the help. I'm glad you took the time to watch this video. I imagine there aren't too many people watching it live because it's such a beautiful day today and it's Saturday. Uh, the next time I'll be on is Tuesday, April 7th at 2 p.m., Facebook Live. And this time I'll be talking about the Photos app once again, but specifically to address iPhones and iPads, which is a little bit different. However, tomorrow, Chris Toy will be on at 2 o'clock, and he said something about dessert pasta. Hmm, I wonder what that could be. So again, thank you for stopping by. I uh, hope you will continue to come back and see us at 2 o'clock, or if you can't watch us live, uh, check in later and watch the video. Have a great weekend. Stay safe. Uh, get plenty of sleep. Eat healthy. And take a walk when you can.